Okay. Uh, today, everybody, welcome to the Tukin Rescue Ranch, and welcome to the 8th Annual Slot Iron Games. We are here in Nazareth of Sarapiki at our release site, where we are going to do the award ceremony. So you join us all throughout the week. We're very excited to learn how which one of our slots won. We're very, very excited to tell you. And here with you is me, I'm the vet supervisor, Andres, and here is... I'm Tessa, I'm the release site supervisor. So right here we are exactly where our slots are. All of the slots that we had over in the South Ironman Games have moved on into our South University and this is where this is located. So right here at our South University we're going to introduce you back to them and go through their scores and um, tell you a little bit about them as well. So the first very exciting thing that happened this year is you might have not imagined this but we actually have a tie <laughs> so third and fourth position are actually tied together and that would be the lovely pax and the lovely liana come in here we have pax joining us and, and we can liana have liana come right up and they're both here with us the the dynamic duo a lot of rumors about um, them being together or being very, very joined at the hip uh, have started around the South Ironman Games, but it's really excited to see. It's really exciting to see them uh, at this point with each other. Uh, they're adorable, uh, and as you can see, they've grown plenty from uh, the footage that we got from the South Ironman Games. So it's very excited, exciting for us to be able to see them this way. They both came uh, from different backgrounds, from different places. Um, so one of them came from a national park over in the area, Aqua uh, Barbilla, and the other one came from around this area actually. So it's pretty excited, exciting to see them, and they look very different according to where they come, or where they came from, which is pretty special. Um, and yeah, next up is of course our second place, and our second place, surprising absolutely nobody, with at least. It was 1,800? Yes, it was 1,800. 1,800 <laughs> points. We have the wonderful, the massive, the blonde, Coco. <laughs> and Coco actually got he came here at the release site um, almost a year ago. She came super small. You guys might have seen her viral video when she was yawning, and she has come so far. We're so happy to have her back at the release site with us. She's absolutely enjoying this flower. Yeah, when she first arrived here, uh, she had actually uh, had been, like she was actually found on her own. It was presumed that her mother had been um, killed in a dog attack. And she was really, really tiny, a newborn almost, mm -hmm. at 392 grams. And she has since grown a lot. She's one of the fastest growing sloths we've ever had. Um, she came here weighing an impressive 1.6 kilograms. So she's, she's a big girl. She's a big girl. And she knows it. And she's trying to get bigger. So that's pretty good yeah. to see. You can see why she's growing so fast. She's eating while the other two are off doing, doing their own lot. thing. <laughs> yeah. Sauce love hibiscus flowers, but some of them love each other more than hibiscus flowers, so that's kind of like a thing. And thanks for your support, thanks to your support, and thanks to all, all your wonderful, wonderful donations. We can firmly say that Noodle, of course, South Ironman Games with over 3,000 votes. And those 3,000 votes represent each of them a dollar that will go back to our program, that will go back to helping sloths in need that will go back into our sloth university to teach our sloths to be able to survive back into the wild. And while Noodle is no longer with us, uh, we can, you know, he lives on through the project and he lives on through the other sloths that we're helping. Uh, so it's very, very, we're very, very happy to be able to, um, you know, receive all these wonderful donations and to be able to put them and applying them into helping uh, all the other sloths that we have right now in the program and the ones that you'll likely get to see next year on the next Sloth Ironman Games. And uh, here we have Coco, Liana, Pax, and they're receiving all the wonderful flowers that would have gone to Noodle. It's very, and all the wonderful leaves too. And very, very, and we're very, very excited to see them all together enjoying this wonderful prize. Yeah. Uh, and in these leaf bouquets are actually, there's about five different species of leaves in each one. 
and a huge part of their job when they come to the release site is to get to know what leaves they can eat in the wild. So you can see they're eating different varieties here. We have Liana who has joined, no this is Pax. This is Pax who has joined up to start eating some leaves. And um, yeah, a huge part of their development here has been learning to eat these leaves. And we're so happy to see them trying them out, getting better and better at eating them. And so they'll know exactly what to look for when they get released one day. It's a very, very exciting opportunity to be able to share with this sloth. So I don't know if anybody has any questions in chat about all the sloth leads about this year, about our wonderful event and everything that we've done. Uh, we're here for that as well, of course. <laughs> They're just enjoying themselves quite thoroughly, aren't they? If you ever thought that sauce were slow, um, you should, you should rewatch this wrong soft challenge, but also, um, look at them eat. <laughs> That's one of those things that they're very fast at doing, of course. And for those of us who are joining us a little bit late, I'm very, very excited to announce once more that Pax and Liana have tied with 1,120 points each. Uh, Coco is above that at 1,800 points. And then, of course, Noodle was our winner with over 3,000 points. I see we have a question about the Paralympic Slothleys getting some hibiscus. And yes, of course, they are back at headquarters. They are lucky to have these hibiscus flowers quite often. Um, whereas here at the release site, we do focus more on them eating leaves. Um, so this is a special treat for our release site sloth leads, but the Paralympic sloth leads definitely are going to get some hibiscus. <laughs> do they eat any other flowers aside from hibiscus? So uh, uh, hibiscus is one of the more common flowers that they'll eat, and it seems quite reductive, but in reality, uh, there's a wide variety of leaves of flowers uh, like uh, that are part of the same genus of hibiscus so they've been known to eat some pink hibiscus some red hibiscus and a little bit of everything also um, in regards to other inflorescences we can we have seen them eat uh, from ficus the, the flowers also the fruits and also the leaves so a little bit of everything uh, but this ones are just very they're very, very fond of eating this hibiscus leaves. And the thing with the hibiscus leaves is that even people eat them. So you can put them in your salad. They're really, really yummy. Uh, they taste kind of like sweet. Um, it's like a kid children's treat here, actually, even. I see another question about how much longer these babies will be in the program before they will be rewilded. So right now, um, the three of them are still in enclosures in the front that are smaller enclosures. They're in kind of transition enclosures. Um, getting to have more space than they did at uh, San Isidro at headquarters, but they still have yet to transition to the large pre-release enclosures that we have in the back. So in a couple of weeks, hopefully, we'll have our first, our biggest sloth, probably Coco, will start going back to um, a pre-release enclosure and she'll spend some time in an even bigger enclosure before she gets eventually released back into the wild. I can't say definitively when that will happen because it depends on her growth her behaviors and how she's doing so that we can make sure that she's best prepared before going back into the wild. So somebody has asked, how is Landon doing? Landon is doing much, much better than he was when he first arrived. He has since learned, you know, how to take his groove and stride and walk and climb a little bit more than he would usually do. He still, when he gets tired and over long periods of time, he'll start getting a little bit clumsier. Um, which is, of course, the reason why we won't be able to release him back into the wild. But uh, he honestly has improved a lot, and he's doing really, really, really great. So what are their favorite uh, vegetables? So this loss over here, they've never tasted vegetables in their life. That's something that's really, really um, important for us to um, know and for us to tell you. Uh, this guys over here, they don't really eat anything that uh, they wouldn't find in the wild and uh, cook green beans and carrots, which is what we would give to the adults are not really things that they would find in the wild. So we try to keep them with as wild a diet as possible. Uh, we usually try to pump them up in the first few months of their life with 
very nutritious milk so they can later move on onto a smoothie and then from that smoothie they can really easily move on onto leaves and in regards to what leaves they prefer that's a question for tessa over here each sloth kind of has their own palette of which leaves they each prefer as you saw coco went immediately for the almond leaf and that seems to be a fan favorite uh, the beach almond leaves uh, we did have Pax over here going straight for the cacao, but then he quickly transitioned to the almond leaf just like the others. I, I read a question over here about what we need for Christmas, and you can always check out our Amazon wish list. We, over there we have all the stuff that we are in constant need of. Uh, we're also moving on to uh, doing some projects this year, so check out all the other fundraising that we're going to do this year. Everything that we'll uh, do will go back to the animals, be it helping the sloths, helping some other animals that we're trying to uh, approach. And also, just in general, um, your support, you know, sharing us on social media, being able to, um, you know, continue, us, uh, continue sharing us with other people so that we can start spreading the word about these animals and the work that we do in Costa Rica. All of those are great Christmas presents. <laughs> See, Coco's going over to steal some flowers. That's clearly her favorite. <laughs> um, regarding how Winnie is doing, so Winnie um, is actually a very interesting case. Winnie is one of our sauce that we have deemed to be unreleasable. Winnie has a condition called a uh, congenital hernia. And as the word may say, congenital, that means that it can be passed along into her offspring. So this is something that we don't want, obviously, to spread onto the populations of sloths that live in the wild. So uh, that means that she's not going to be, he's not going to be released uh, back into the wild. Winnie, like Winnie the Pooh, so it's a boy. Um, mm -hmm. And Winnie is um, doing really well, honestly. He's just growing, eating a lot. He's the biggest belly of any sloth I've ever known. Um, and it's still kind of looking kind of weird, but, um, he's pretty great. I see a question asking if Pax and Leanna are still best buddies. So part of the transition of coming to the release site is gaining independence. And although Pax and Leanna's enclosures are near each other, they are not as close as you may have seen them be at headquarters. Um, they don't typically... Um, interact with each other much besides their moms at around this age and actually most of these guys would probably be away from mom pretty soon and would not be hanging out with other sloths in the wild yeah sloths are adventurous and so as soon as they get to be of a very specific size and weight they would start to be separating themselves from their mother until their mother cannot handle them anymore and she can kind of just chase them away and that's what we're trying to replicate with this sloth as well trying to make them as uh, wild, as independent, and as separate as possible. Quartering themselves. <laughs> the two-toed ones get so angry. That is so true. I don't know if you heard earlier, but there was some hissing going on with the competition for the leaves and flowers. They're trying to get the best stuff for themselves. <laughs> we'll put the uh, wish list link uh, in the comments down below, I believe, or our marketing team is going to fix that it's for sure. It's on Instagram. It's on Instagram as well. Link three. Oh yeah, you can go to the link tree in our bio on Instagram where you'll see various links and one of them is the wish list for Amazon. Coco's just covered in flowers. <laughs> just, uh, demolishing. Um, they do not vocalize much when they're adults. They don't vocalize much when they're chil uh, children either. Or they shouldn't, actually. Uh, they, um, these vocalizations are usually associated with stress, stressful situations and things like that. Um, they'll hiss at each other when they're getting too close to their space. And so adult sloths will only vocalize when they're interacting with another adult sloth. Um, you know, how making them, you know, want to go away, giving them space, that kind of thing. And also, um, they'll vocalize when in really, really extreme duress. 
So this like uh, small kind of childlike vocalization that babies do in which they're basically crying, the little eh, uh, sloths will also do that, like adult sloths would, would also do that when they're really, 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 really stressed or in a bad situation as well. But it's a rare circumstance to hear a sloth vocalize, or it should be at the very least. After the live is over, we can post the Amazon wishlist link to Facebook for easier access. We'll post it everywhere, I think. <laughs> Do they eat any fruit? Um, so in captivity, sloths have been known to eat a wide variety of things, um, including fruit, though it shouldn't be a big part of their uh, diet, to be perfectly honest with you. But in the wild, they've been known to eat uh, fruits, primarily fruits that are really high in fiber and really low in sugar. Um, so we're talking about things like wild figs, for example, um, and things like that. We're trying to, that's kind of like what they would eat in the wild. In captivity though, they've been known to eat um, things like guavas, um, maybe even some mangoes and things like that. Yeah, Coco is looking like she's ready for the poop off challenge now. She is <laughs> chunky. The two fingered look sloths look so smooth that they sweat through their nose. Yes, they do actually, but typically it's not too much. Normally we see sweat on the nose when they're stressed actually. So if we take them into the clinic for a general health checkup, um, it's easy to tell if they're hydrated or not, depending on if they're sweating through their nose. But their noses are always a bit damp. And it's one of the more interesting characteristics of sloths. They don't have sweat glands anywhere in their body that is not their nose. And so um, they only use that, it seems, for communication purposes more than anything else. Um, they don't really sweat to try to lose heat like most other mammals would. Uh, just They can't. So, um, sloths are complicated animals for thermoregulation purposes. <laughs> Pax just had a little spasm. He was like, weird. So, I see someone commenting that unfortunately they can't come visit us in person, but we do offer virtual tours. So, you can definitely sign up for one of those to get to know more of our staff members and our lovely permanent residents. Yeah, it's important to not boob the snoot because uh, they do have really, 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 really sharp teeth and they will use them uh, for real. Um, I heard two-toed sloths eat lizards sometimes if they're fast enough. Is that true? Um, it can be-ish. Uh, sloths are opportunistic. They're not animals that would let go of a meal if it was presented to them in any shape or form that that male may take. Uh, there have been no registered... Uh, cases of sloths eating lizards in uh, the wild, uh, at least not reported. But, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me that if they find a little lizard somewhere, a dead one especially, they would just, you know, go ahead and eat it. They're fast, but they're not that fast to try to chase a lizard around. All right, for us joining us quite late, uh, I will repeat the scoreboard. We have Pax and Liana on third place, with Coco on second place, and of course Noodle having resoundedly won the games in first place, earning over 3,000 votes. Very, very exciting. I don't know if you guys have any final questions before we close this live. Uh, if so, let them come our way.
All right. So if you guys have no further questions, we want to thank you so, so, so much for having joined us on the 8th Annual Sloth Iron Games. And we really, really, truly hope that you will join us next year on the 9th. Saving is last together. We are very, very happy to have saved the Sloths together with you guys this year. And it's amazing to have been um, so blessed by all your help. Um, and, you know. And we I'm truly couldn't do this without you. All right. That program. Hmm? Saving us last together. The program. Um, Talk about it. Yeah. So the program that this loss are part of is called Saving Sloths Together. And it's a really, really amazing program in which um, with our expertise and you guys helping us out, we're allowed to take this loss from uh, the point of their almost birth a lot of the time to try to get them up and into the wild again. Uh, there's a lot of problems that sloths have faced categorically over the years um, and a lot, like all of them really, are because of human uh, issues. The problems that we see a lot of the time are issues that have to do with encroachment like being run over or being electrocuted or um, you know abandoned babies, things like that and all of those have to do with people. And so um, I'm very, very happy to be able to participate in the Saving Sloths Together program, um, being able to take these babies that are often about 300 grams, just tiny, tiny babies, and then being able to make them grow into this size and further uh, so that we can release them back into the wild is very, very um, exciting. And this is kind of where the ending of the magic happens, the final sprinkles of magic get thrown around the pot. Um, and yeah. The Saving Sloths Together program started in collaboration with other rescue centers, mainly the Sloth Institute, as you guys well know. And that's kind of why it's called the Saving Sloths Together program. But now we want to reach that out to you guys and include you guys as part of that togetherness because it is truly impossible without your help to even be able to help these guys. So thank you so much for all of your continued support. Thank you guys so much. And if there's no further questions or anything else, then uh, we'll let you guys go. But uh, we'll see you ne uh, next year in the next uh, edition of the Sloth Ironman Games. And we hope that you guys have a really, really good day wherever you come from. Thank you so much for joining us.